Most of us are probably very proud of our characters. They're our children, or us, or our children and us at the same time. I'm sure even more of us fantasize about owning physical items of our characters. I don't think all of us actually ended up buying them, though. That is, except me, who custom ordered a plush earlier this summer of my favorite Vivid character of all time. I thought it'd be a nice time to do a quick check-in and a little history lesson with you all, so strap in and stay tuned to the end of the video for the unboxing of said plush. For those of you who are new here, the character I'm drawing is Vita, who is one of the cast members in my original sci-fi drama, Vivit. The main story playlist will be linked down in the description, so be sure to watch that before coming back here! For the rest of you, I'm sure I don't need to explain the plot, so I'll spare the refresh. If you need one, there will also be a link in the description to the Act 1 plot summary. You're welcome. Now, this is probably the first actual Vivid content I've made for this channel in a while, and I have a multitude of reasons for that. School, art block, the like, but that's not important. I should address that it is coming back at some point. I haven't given up on it at all. If my social media is any indication, I still love these characters dearly. I just needed more time to polish it than I originally intended. It's one of those projects that I released way earlier than I should have, and now I'm attempting to play catch up while I get my bearings in order. Really, I would not be doing this if I could help it, but this is just how things are going to be. I want to get the best version of this story out there, and if that takes a little bit more time than I anticipated, I think it will be well worth it in the end. But regardless, um, Vita is one of those characters that I'm really excited to be showing off once Act 2 is back in session. Um, they're one of my favorite characters, and the second character I actually ever developed. Um, they, along with Amethyst, were both the starting characters for this one-off short story, which very quickly became a non-short story. A very long story, actually. Um, Vita especially has been very near and dear to me for the character arc I've been developing, and they've also actually kickstarted a lot of self-actualization in my life. I'm sure you guys know what that's like, you know? Having a character whose story tells you so much more than you initially realized about your own experiences. They were created in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, and I was struggling a lot with feelings of isolation and loneliness. I was a very introverted person by nature. I didn't have a lot of friends in real life, to be honest. I was just like kind of one of those kids that people always saw as like weird. Nice, but weird. So people always kept kind of kept me at the arm's length. And then I just accepted I didn't need friends. I stuck to being online. I thought it was fine. But then the COVID-19 pandemic hit and everything was just so different, you know? It's like, it wasn't just being a choice anymore to be a loner. I was just there, home every day with people I couldn't connect to. I found myself in really unhealthy places online. I got threats for stuff I was doing. Some of them warranted, some of them way too far. My mental health literally collapsed in two. And it really, it just did a number on me. And like most of my life, I coped through writing and through art. It was the one thing that was always a constant in my life, and soon I conceptualized these two characters. They both were stuck in an isolated environment, like me. They both were dealing with a lot of big feelings, like me. And both felt like nobody could really understand them, that they were somehow uniquely troubled and yet trying so hard to convince themselves that it's okay. And sometimes they clash, sometimes they're stubborn, even if they aren't always right about it. Vita was every nasty part of myself that was kind of manifesting in that time period. They're homeschooled and unsocialized, trust me I will be touching on that in the main story, and they develop a really smug and entitled attitude. They take on aggressive personas in order to get even the slightest amount of control in their life. And really, with a parent like theirs, you need that kind of thing. 
Sam isn't a good person, but I think we know that. And they tend to take on his worst traits. It's the ego without the self-loathing he has. It's the entitlement without any self-righteousness. But yeah, they... I really just love their character very, very dearly. And with that, I always tend to spoil them a bit when it comes to buying commissions and other stuff. I like their design. I like drawing it. And when I have the opportunity, I like to, you know, help out my favorite artists and be like, Hey, draw my Blorbo, please. <laughs> but yeah. Then a few months back, I think in, I want to say spring of this year, I saw like these little cotton dolls on TikTok, Instagram, that kind of stuff. And I just got really interested in owning one, but none of like the fandoms people were usually making them for were stuff I was really into. And then the stuff I did find usually had hair types I didn't like, or just something about it that was off. And really, I wanted merchandise of my characters. I love them more than any piece of media I've been to. There's something personal about them. And then I saw these custom commissions for them on places like Etsy. And I went back and forth on it for a while. I was like, oh no, it's too expensive. And then I realized I'm an adult now. It's one of those things when you just turn into adult, you're still getting used to. That you have the freedom to just manage your own finances and buy stuff as long as it really counts. So I did. I contacted KT Custom Dolls on Etsy. And this is the part where I clarify that I'm not sponsored by them at all. Like, at all. I just really enjoy the work that was done. <laughs> And they helped me out with the process of getting this doll together. They walked me through exactly what I should be ordering on the order page. Um, took my very messy base sketch, really. They're a saint alone for doing that. And that got transformed into a base outline. And that into embroidery. And that into the character. I felt very respected every step of the way. I got to choose the fabrics, I had control over the creative process, and I knew and could trust I was getting a good product. Even the shipping, like, I got this character in like less than a week. I, I'm so thankful for it, really, if any of you guys watch this video and think, huh, I want a character of my own. Again, I'm not sponsored, I'm just so amazed by this artist's work that I would 100% recommend it. Literally, I have no notes. You can check Etsy reviews yourself. All of these are glowing. And I was really thrilled. And well, I got a bit overboard after that. Bought a bunch of clothes. Probably more clothes than I need. And I will probably be buying even more clothes because that is what I'm into right now. I'm very into character fashion. Um, if you've seen all my social media, I've been like working out little character wardrobes, and Vita does definitely have the most clothes. There's a lore reason for that, I promise. And it's the lore reason that sometimes you have a parent who has so much guilt over dead wife murder that he has to cope with it through financial gifts. This is not love bombing, guys. I totally promise. Sam would never love bomb anyone ever in his life. Honestly, it's an unfair accusation. <laughs> but yeah, um, I was really happy to get this little companion piece done with um, the clothes I had. I actually didn't even have the doll yet as I was drawing this. I still don't have the doll yet as I'm recording this either. Really, I'm just going in completely blind. But I know that I'm going to be more than happy with having that little guy in my arms and... Oh! I actually think I hear the door, so... That might be my package! I literally have not been able to shut up about this. I'm... Okay, okay, okay. This is like the closest you're ever gonna get to a face reveal. I'm not face revealing. Ever. Okay, okay. Sorry, I'm... 
I don't want to cut this up, so I'm just gonna go ham with it. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. So the things in here. Wow, this is really solid. Okay. There okay, there's nothing in the bag. There's nothing in the bag. Let's. Oh my god. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, we got like bonus goodies. Okay, let's let's open those first. So, um we got this little like thing from the shop. The shop. This is adorable. Um oh, we got these little goodies, like little minis and a birth certificate. A birth certificate. It's It's their birthday, guys. It's their birthday. I mean, no, it's not. It's December 23rd, for those who want to know. But look at how cute these little mini things are. Oh my god. Like, you got, you got this, and this, and. Do you really like the beauty? Oh, these are adorable. Oh my god. Okay, okay, okay. And we got this little pouch. Um. It's this handmade, it's a door, look at this bracelet, guys. Oh my gosh. Okay, we're gonna put that on. We're putting that on. Okay, okay. And now, the doll, the doll, okay. Uh, it has a warning. Oh, oh look at this. Oh, oh, this entire thing is just nothing short of adorable. Oh my gosh, okay. And now I gotta um, hold them firmly because they're they don't got clothes, and I'm sure you two might get me. But like, look at look at this little guy. Litter. Oh. Is YouTube gonna demonetize? I hope not. Oh my god, this is literally all I could have ever wanted. I'm gonna dress them up real quick. Okay. I got I got the thing dressed. It's dressed now. It's literally look at this beautiful little thing. This silly little individual that has taken up so much time in my life. Let's go 360. Serving literally serving ate it up that's that's it that's the video